I'm going to teach you all how to make a slab cup. Uh, today it will be first how to throw a slab, lay it all out, and start to build a beautiful slab cup and a handle to boot. Um, let's get started. So to start off with, what we want to do is have a fresh bag of clay that is coming out and is already coming straight from the clay manufacturer that has no air bubbles and it's ready to be used. So we're going to open that up, and straight from the top, we're going to roll that down, and we're going to take our wire tool, and we're going to cut about an inch to an inch and a half down the side, and slice, slice across evenly, as best we can. Take that out, put it aside. You know what? I'm going to do two. Why not? Just have it ready to go. So we're going to take these two pieces of clay, set them aside, make sure that we close our bag back up so that we don't have any issues. You can use your twist tie to close your bag up, or even just using a needle tool, because very often these little twist ties end up in our clay, or we just lose them. So using your needle tool just to pierce into the top of your bag works well too. Setting that aside, now we're going to start with how to handle the clay. So we're going to take that piece of clay that's already pretty low and wide, because this is slab work. We are going to do a throwing slab construction. I feel that slowing, throwing slabs are the easiest. I'm not a big fan of dowel rods and rolling pins. They too, take too long. It takes a little while to learn this technique, but once you get it, you're in really good shape. If you want to, please look at some of the other videos I provide on how to throw a slab. So we've got this slab out here of this piece of clay, and I'm just going to gently pound it down with my hands to loosen up those clay particles and get this clay a little bit looser. Working my way back and forth. I'm now going to take the clay in my hands, and I'm actually going to kind of lift it and move it back and forth as, and if you want to see a full demonstration with my arm gestures, please watch my slab throwing video in particular. I'm going to lay that down and continue to rotate. And I'm just lifting from one end to the other, allowing this slab, and as you can see, it's already starting to get bigger, to become elongated. If I want it to stay square, I would rotate one way each time. But I want it to become elongated for slab cup. And as I'm working, it's getting longer and longer. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's in the nice consistency to it. Now what I need to do is come in with my ribs, because what's happened is all of the clay particles have completely scattered inside this clay, and it's going in many different directions. And I need to realign those clay particles so that when this clay piece, this slab, starts to dry, that they dry in the same direction, and I can avoid cracks in my pieces. So using my nice, smooth ribs, I'm going to compress in one direction and then in the other. And then the other. And then I'm going to rotate. And then move this all out. So clearly what I have here is two large to be a cup, right? It's way too big. So what I need to do is figure out the dimensions in which I want to work, plus I want to alleviate the thinness of my edges. My favorite tool to work with for slab construction is a quilter's ruler. And a quilter's ruler allows you to use the transparency within the ruler itself to create 90 degree angles on your slab. It's a great investment. You can buy it at any um, fabric store, and with COVID happening, you can actually just get it online, okay? 
So using my slab and my quilter ruler, I'm going to lay this out and start to figure out how I want this to come all together. Got my needle tool. I'm going to alleviate some of my excess edges, some of my pieces. I want to use this clay for later on, so I'm going to ball that up and put it someplace where it can dry, not dry out, and I can wedge it later on. Removing that from my slab, getting that nice 90 degree angle through the transparency of the quilter's ruler, I am going to now do another section. And then keep going, taking advantage of those nice 90 degree angles. Fantastic. I'm going to cut, get rid of my excess clay, and my last section at the top. And I do make these rollers smaller um, for anybody who feels like this is maybe a little too large, but it is a nice advantage if you start to do larger um, slab construction. So now I have my lovely, beautiful, nice one fourth inch slab ready to go and I've now got to decide how big I want my cup to become. And remember again, whenever you make a piece in clay, your slab is going to shrink, not, your, not just your slab, but your piece, is going to shrink between 10 to 15 percent, which is quite large. So think about just making it just a little bit bigger than you anticipate the piece to be in the beginning so that you are very satisfied with your end result when you are done with the firing process. So I have my piece of clay for my base, set that aside, and now I have my piece of clay ready to go for my slab cup. So a nice little trick to get rid of those really, because I've already compressed, I'm ready to construct my, my, um, my piece. What I want to do at this point is I want to alleviate those sharp edges. I don't want any sharp edges on the piece of my slab because nobody's going to want to drink from a sharp edge and the glaze will break on that sharp edge. It won't conceal it. So you want to make sure you go back in with a piece of plastic, a nice piece of smooth, lightweight plastic, and you're going to alleviate those sharp edges. As you can see here, flip over your slab and do the same thing on the bottom. nicely done and I'm ready to go. So this I'm going to set aside for a minute. With my base, I want to make sure it's big enough and it's also just a little bit thicker. So I'm actually going to throw it out just a little bit more to get it to be at the right size. And now that I've re-thrown this, there's something I have to make sure to go back and do, which is compress my, cup, my slab one more time to make sure that those clay particles are nice and compressed to avoid cracking. And when we do this compression, you're not scraping at the top. You're laying it on its side and pushing downward. So make sure that's how you are approaching it as well. Okay. So from here, I now have to determine what I want to do to the surface of this piece. Do I want to leave it smooth or do I want to press anything into this? This would be a good time to go and look into your own supplies and materials, and you could press different things into them. You could be very loose and go and find a beautiful seashell that you maybe have collected at the beach. You could get a pine cone and kind of press into the surface, or nothing at all. I have some beautiful hemp string here that I believe I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to start to make into smaller sections. I love really organic and gestural mark making. 
nothing that's super pictorial or overly soft. I think is really nice and beautiful to see in the surfaces of clay. So as you can see here, I'm laying down and I see I'm being very loose and I'm not overthinking it. I may be having like a very specific area that is a, like almost like a focal point in the center of this circular spiraling rope and everything else creates movement around the form. I'm now going to come in with my rolling pin and it's a rolling pin works really well. This is a rolling pin I have in my studio. But there's also this thing called a pony roller. And this pony roller is really nice because you can get like a nice flat as well as a curve, which gives it a little bit more extra compression. And I'm going to press down into my slab. And while I'm pressing down into my slab, I'm not pressing too hard that I'm distorting the thickness of my slab. I'm just applying and creating a flat kind of almost facade into that surface of that slab so that I am still maintaining the integrity of the form but creating really interesting texture into the surface. So what you could do is you could leave it there. You wouldn't have to necessarily take it out. You might want to cut the ends off because combustible materials like, coal, like rope, hemp, string, anything that is cotton based um, is going to burn away in the firing process. But for me, I'm actually going to pull these all out so that you can get a sense of what that design looks like in my shape as is. Put that aside and kind of show you what I have, which is really nice and beautiful and loose. Okay. So from there, I now need to start to construct my slab cup into its shape. So from here, I'm going to come in and I am just going to apply scored marks with my serrated rib, right, it's got little teeth on it, along the surface of this edge on one side and then a little bit over to the other side. And because I, this is soft slab construction and I've not given it any time to set up, I don't need a lot of moisture. I need a little bit of either water or a little bit of slip, okay? So here I've got this little container full of slip. I'm going to apply that onto the side of my form. It's a very subtle amount. With soft slab construction, too much water can get you into a lot of trouble. So now I'm going to compress that edge into the piece very so slightly. And what's really important about soft slab construction is the minimizing the human mark and your touch. We don't want fingerprints all over this. It's actually really beautiful to see the seams of those pieces as you're working. And you can see that in the interior as well. Allowing the process to be evident isn't necessarily a bad thing. So from here, I've made my cup shape and then I need to figure out its foot, right? So I'm going to figure out what shape I exactly want this to be, kind of get it into form. I am now going to outline that shape with my needle tool, working my way around, gently, and you can tell I'm not, my, my touch is very light. I'm not allowing my finger marks to cause any marks as we, as we work our way around this. Now I have my indented shape. I'm going to cut that out as well. And using everything that is attached has to be scored. So I've scored along the edge and the same thing goes with along the edge and the same width as the edge of my cup. Nothing should exceed beyond that because if it does, I will be leaving these scored marks as almost like a glue. So when you think of other kind of materials, scored marks can be reviewed as almost like residual glue sticking out. Now I've got a little bit of my slip. I'm applying a very small amount because again, this is soft slab construction and it's already so moist. 
and then where the seam meets the, the foot, I'm going to line this all back up. And right now, my cup is very, very soft. And where you can see where it's all kind of lining up together. I want to kind of tap that a little bit using that force of gravity to allow it to adhere to itself for a minute. And then I'm going to set this cup aside, make sure that it's nice and circular and leave it a little bit of time to dry before I come in and really clean it up at the interior shape and then also start to figure out my handle. So let's give it a couple minutes and we'll come back to this in a sec. But here is the surface design on the side of the form so far. Okay, everybody, this is the last step of the slab cup demonstration. I'm now going to add the handle to my form. And to start off with, um, I am adding handles that I actually just pinched with my fingers um, into these beautiful shapes that I really like to work with. Um, you can use any handle that you want to, um, but this is the handle that I'm really excited about using in my current body of work. And each handle you can see is of a specific width and size to meet the dimensions of each of my cup shapes. So let's get started. So when we look at these cups that I've been letting sit for a little while um, and that you've already seen me demonstrate how to make, I now need to figure out the placement for each of those handles. So looking at the profile, I know that my larger handle is for my larger mug. And so I can decide, and usually in the past, I've always put my handles on my seam because I want the seam to be basically somewhat hidden and disguised by the handle itself. So you can see here. And I also want to figure out where I want the placement of that handle to go when I look at that profile, right? And the relationship of how ergonomically it fits within my hand and the relationship to the form. And you can also see that the profile needs to be more inverted, so I need to push that in with my fingers or using my exacto knife or even a settling knife, I need to cut some of that away so that it will fit nicely into the price profile of the exterior of my shape. So I'm just going to use my finger to get that nicely pressed back into the form that I want it to be so it can fit easier onto my mug. So making sure that those profiles work nicely as you're making them. So once I figure that out, I'm also now going to figure out where I want that mug handle to go. So for me, I'm going to put it kind of in the middle. And you can bend down and kind of look at them as you're, as you're, as you're kind of figuring out your placement. Um, and that is, you know, very, very telling. So you can look up high, really low in the middle, and so on and so forth, right? Where do you want your handle to fit? Once you figure out your placement, which I'm happy with that, you want to just put very soft registration marks about where you need to score. So I'm going to come in and I'm scoring. In both locations with my needle tool. And this is imperative. You must score and attach your piece as well. Okay. And again, using my, my slip, I'm just using a very small amount because these have been sitting for a little bit and so they're a little dry. 
And then I need to figure out how I'm attaching. And I think, yep, we're sticking with this way. And again, I'm not applying too much pressure, but I'm definitely attaching them so that they are adhering to the form, but I'm not creating any finger marks, okay? So make sure that you also are not compromising the integrity of these forms as you're attaching your shape. And as of right now, it's kind of flaring down a little bit. I want to push this up to create a form that I'm more excited about. Let's do something like that. Hopefully you guys can see that better. And now I need to let this sit for a little bit. And I'm going to come back and clean it all up, top and bottom, make sure everything's really well adhered. I'm going to put my name on the bottom, maybe do a little bit of colored slip. But all in all, this handle fits nicely to the shape of the form. It's the right size, it will fit my hand, it's not flaring out too far, it's not too small, and voila, okay. Now let's look at my second handle and my second piece and see how we're going to approach that one. So again here, deciding where this handle is going to be applied, so looking at its profile, deciding if you want it up high, down low, and I think for this one I kind of like it down low. So I'm going to figure out where that's going to go. Applying my cross hatching in both sections, doing the same thing. within the handle, applying my slip, going back to my same registration areas, right, and pressing them into place. So when, and you can see I'm putting my hand on the inside to kind of act as a resist as I'm pressing into that shape to make that attachment. Then looking at the profile, my hand can fit nicely into that form. And then voila, I'm going to let that set up for a little bit and then come and work at it some more a little bit later. And that, my friends, is how we make slab cups and handles.